Capricorn. Oh my gosh, I have this David Bowie and Placebo song just stuck in my head and it won't go away. And it's called Without You I'm Nothing. And there's this part that he's just like, Without you, I'm nothing. It's so powerful and Bowie's just in the background just killing it with the backup vocals. And it's, I don't know, I really, I just kind of recently discovered Placebo as a band and I really... When I like one of their songs, I'm like obsessed with it. And just the fact that Bowie's in it, you can hear just his, you know, that Bowie voice, that tempo on the background. It's just like, anyways, this is not leaving me. And it came up in the last reading that I just did. And um, it's still playing. So that was kind of like, you're nothing without yourself. I don't really know what it's going to mean for this reading. So let's do these cards. Let's see what the black deck reveals. Island time. Oracle. In, my, in the last video too, the thumbnails, me holding the card that says idiot, and YouTube gives you three thumbnails to choose from unless you want to choose your own. And that thumbnail was chosen. I really hope you're not acting like an idiot. You could be. I mean, getting that card in my head, I'll, I'll, that's from my deck. I'll shuffle my deck and see what it says. But I don't know. Are you acting a motherfucking fool? I wonder. I wonder. Ooh. So we got um, three cards that fell in a row, and we also have an addiction hiding underneath the deck. So we've got engagement ring, we've got ascending, it came in reverse, but I'm not really, I don't really take these cards in reverse, so I'm not going to take it in reverse, and then girl with a snake. So it looks like... Oh, okay. So I kind of see engagement ring and girl with the snake together. Okay. And then ascending was kind of like popping up in between. So I feel like somebody is in a commitment with somebody or engaged to somebody and they're being used. They're being charmed, used. And they're in some type of narcissistic paragram, like, and they can't get out of it. And they need to assemble boundaries. And then as soon as they put their boundaries up, then they're going to get right out of it. And it's like, put it this way, it would be... Okay, it would be like you have a partner. Okay, this, this is just like hypothetical because I mean there is some type of partnership or any so hy for hypothetical reasons to, for explaining reasons. Say you're with a partner that was 100% narcissistic and addicted to everything they did. And if you didn't conform or adapt to every change that that addiction had with that person or every chain that that chained that person down. If you didn't do everything that you could for that person, it always ended up in a fight. And that fight was blamed on you for not bending and breaking to ease this person's landing in life. Okay. So, and it seems like you feel like you can't get out of it because you've got a commitment, which means you're either, you've got a house together or you have a kid together. And you know what came to me? Actually, I think it was last night in my dreams that Majority of people have kids with somebody they feel in the future to be an idiot. And, and it's, it's so funny because in the, in the time and in the energy that you're doing it, you feel like it's the best thing you could possibly do. But then 10 years, five years, 16 years, 20 years later, you look down the road and you go, I had a fucking kid with an idiot. And it, there's always one person who is the idiot and one person who's smart. But then that idiot 
makes that other person turn into an idiot because, or, you know, I mean, very rarely does a smart person turn an idiot. For the most part, an idiot will always think a smart person's an idiot because they're an idiot themselves, right? So they're never going to see somebody's brightness or somebody's smartness over their ego or pride because they're a moron, right? So anyways, let's do this deck. Oh, okay. Let's do that deck first. Okay. Okay. So it seems like, like you're obviously some type of empath. And you can, you're, you can feel them or you're a part, like, you're enabling them to do this to you, I, I think. And, but the thing is that you're preparing to get out of it. So you could be stashing money away. Um, you could be making your plans, going and seeing your lawyer. How, how do I get out of this? What do I do? It's like preparing to get out of something. So then you can get into something. What is that? The three of wands? Oh, Brownie. So the three of wands. So this character, Brownie, he's, he's kind of, he's an elf and he's known as like, kind of like a magical elf. And he comes in and he cleans your house at night. That's what Brownie does. Cleans, he comes in, he cleans up your shit at night. And um, when nobody knows and nobody's around and nobody can see, he's magical. So you could have, you could be having some type of, um, spiritual awakening at night and maybe you're doing something at night. Like maybe that's what you're doing. Maybe you're cleaning up your life at night because this person's sleeping. And, and when you live with somebody and you're trying to get away from them and you're off work and they're off work and you can't get away from them because all you have is one building, one building one building all you have is one bedroom and one living room and one kitchen and there's no where to hide right you obviously stay up late trying to figure out how to break free six of wands six of swords sorry and the six of swords harpy harpy um harpy becomes part bird and she flies and I feel like you're going, you could be flying, you could be getting ready to fly. Maybe you're going to take a trip and that helps you get out of whatever it is that you're in because then take, getting yourself out of it. That's the thing is sometimes you just have to get out of it. Like a haunted house, you know, like what, what's that movie? Oh, Amityville Horror. Like every time they get out of the house, they feel so much better. But when they're inside the house, they feel like they're, they're drained, they're possessed, they're angry. But then when they get out of the house, they're fine again, right? So maybe you're getting ready to leave. And that's going to change a lot. If you leave, then that breaks the stagnation and forces somebody to do something, right? Instead of just hang in the same energy. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is really weird because this cup that I have is the Yeti, um, the Yeti Technip FMC brand, okay? And I was looking at it as I was shuffling. And look at this. Look what just fell on the ground. The Yeti. Like, sometimes I should just point out what I see, and I do for the most part, but if I pointed out every single sign that I saw right before the card, I would never get the reading. Because signs are, I read signs so easily because I'm perceptive. If you're perceptive to what you're seeing, then you're going to start to follow signs, okay? And what's this bad boy on the ground? Oh, two of wands, Cyclops. Choosing, okay, choosing a direction. So the Cyclops are known to work in the mountains, Okay. And they, they're blacksmiths. So they create, they create weapons and they, they smash, you know, they smash metal and they work under, um, mountains that are erupting. That's kind of the Cyclops thing. And, and that's the whole kind of like, uh, legacy or myth mythology of them is that they work under mountains that are erupting. Okay. Obviously because the lava would is you know lava and flame is one of the only coals is one of the only things that can melt metal right so they choose to work under the right conditions so you know what that's something about this i feel like with the yeti the yeti is the hermit he goes and he hides 
for a while. Okay? And then when he's ready to come out, he comes out. So, I feel like you might go somewhere and hide for a bit. And when you're ready to come out, when you're ready to surface, you go, you choose a direction. Okay, you're going to end up choosing a different direction. You're going to choose a direction where you feel like you are going to be able to work under the right conditions. Because right now, I don't feel like you're in the correct conditions that you need to be in. And that's the thing, that, that if you're not in the right conditions, that just means that you're in the in-between. And the in-between is the uncomfortable time, right, where you want to hide, but you have to get through the uncomfortable time to get to the comfortable time, right? So I do feel like um, you might decide to, you might be making plans at night to move, and once you move, you hide. And then once you're done hiding and regrouping and getting your strength and getting a little bit of rest, you enter into a new direction that has you working with the right materials, with the right people, doing the right thing, in the right conditions, with the right direction. It's like everything becomes correct. But it's leaving this narcissistic paradigm behind and not and choosing not to take it with you. Because believe it or not, you might be in a situation where you think that you're getting everything that you can, but really you're just being used. And there is no love and there is no security and there is no future. You're just being used for the sake of being used. to finish it off we have ooh, beautiful that's my favorite character right here is Gollum the clay crushing giant and then we've got the tooth fairy the Aquarius um, energy so I do believe that you're going to crush this and you are going to crush the people that are stopping you from now on because there's a victory that has your name on it and if people, if, if somebody's going to twist and turn you into something that you're not and then trap you there, then the only thing you can do is put out your wings, fly the fuck away. And look at the tooth fairies literally flying. And that delivers so much Oh my God, I can hear this guy pissing downstairs. Suddenly, all of a sudden, somebody moved in and I can just hear them pissing all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to hear a guy pissing unless he's fucking me. That's for sure. I don't want to hear some dude on some other fucking floor pissing in the middle of the night. And I can hear him just pissing. Like, don't you ever hear like hit it off the back rim or something? Like, do you have to just aim for the deepest part of the toilet every time, guys? Like, come on, hit the back rim. I don't know what that has to do with something to do with this reading. I don't know why. I don't get angry, but I get worked up sometimes over just disgusting things. I don't want to hear somebody pissing. Really, it's not a concert hall. Fuck. This is my apartment that I pay $1,000 for a month. Go fuck yourself. Like, really? Anyways, you're going to crush this. And I have full fucking faith in you, Capricorn, that whatever it is you want to get out of, you will get out of it as long as you know that oh my god look i cut the deck to the runner even if you've got to run away from this person do it if it's gonna save your life they're wearing a mask anyways they're not who you think they are and if anything they don't know who you are because soon you're gonna break them